Christmas, December 18th, 2022, and here's a little update video on the Datsun so far. So I was putting the lower radiator hose on there. Notice how it's touching the frame rail. So I think we should go ahead and cut it back. Don't want to cut it too short. We're going to start by cutting about half an inch off. Hopefully this, God dang it. Of course it's going to be dull. Beautiful, look at that. Little things like that, that make a big difference. So I'm going to the electrical. I need to access the windshield wipers and the motors under this cover. Let's see how we can get this off. So the wipers have a 14 millimeter nut on them. Let's take that off. I would loosen it and then do that. So it's got four number two Phillips screws. They're kind of fat with a plastic washer. And it looks like somebody tried to take this off before because there's no plastic washer and the screw is stripped. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a tap. Just put all my force down and all my force to turn it. So it's trying to spring forward, meaning that it's pushed back. Ooh, careful. Oh man, this car would have been painted. We would have just screwed up. And I'm so glad I just figured that out right now because you better have all of this crap on there when you paint your car because look, it's so easy to hit all this stuff. All right, so it's got these little tab things, styrofoam or foam pieces. Anti-vibration, I would imagine. Put all your screws back, because you will guarantee you're gonna lose these. I never bag and tag because I am out of sight, out of mind, guaranteed. If I bag and tag these, I won't even know where I put them, and I'll end up ordering new ones, wasting money like I've been doing for many years. But I don't do that. Oh, God dang it. I don't do that anymore. Man, I hope these aren't freaking screwed up. They are screwed up. The neural part is not even existing anymore. So there's these little seals that are gone. Oh my God. Okay. I keep this stuff too. I throw it in the parts bucket. So glad I took that off because you can see it's just full of crap in there. The windshield wiper motor. It's in this bag. I might just leave it alone if it works. Look at all that stuff in there. So getting ready to put the ignition on. The cool bracket goes right here. Somebody broke a bolt off. So let's see how easy it is to get that out. All right, so I sprayed it down with that. And we're gonna take a brand new drill bit. Drill, drill straight through it. So you see how we're just drilling through the bolt. You know how stupid I am? We didn't even think to go look on the inside. Oh God, it's like clearly right there. An idiot moment. Let me get some vice grips. So I almost drilled through the whole thing. It probably did loosen it up a little bit. We were just gonna get a screw extractor, bolt extractor, whatever, but we got it out. So getting this ready for the ignition video, we're just gonna sandblast it all, clean it up. Look at that, what the heck? We just sandblasted through the freaking coil. See all that pitting on this coil, how it's rusty? And we sandblast it through the rust. So this coil is trash. That sucks. I'm actually a little disappointed because this is the coil I was gonna put on the car. A 280Z has a 12 volt coil. You run 12 volts straight to it, no ballast resistor. As soon as I start to do this, it's starting to rain. I don't care. Light coats, watch the wind blow and roll it off in the sand. It's happened to me many times. So we painted that. I'm so in love with these paints right here. These things work so freaking great. They give it just a natural metal new look. I don't know, I can't explain it. it smells like glue. It looks like chrome, doesn't it look? Oh, look, you can't even tell. So they ran out of this stuff. This is my new go-to color right here, dark steel. That looks beautiful. I mean, look at this. It looks like it was plated. Gotta love that it's reacting to the paint that was on it. Awesome. 
All right, so I was painting my coil. Notice how the paint job's not finished. And that happened right there. I don't have too many friends, but the ones I do, I like to mess with them. So I will put a sticker like this and make them think that it's some kind of special racing coil, but it's just the old one. That looks so cool like that. Can anybody guess why I started doing that? Why do you think I do that? What is the reason? I actually like that oil filter sticker. It looks so cool. So the original plugs are going back in the car. They're sandblasted and cleaned. So when you mess with old cars, you have to understand points ignition and electronic ignition. Points ignition is going to use a 35,000th gap. Electronic ignition on GM is 45,000th. But if you look these plugs up, it'll say... 41 thousandths to 44 thousandths on the 280z so since the same spark plugs fit the point ignition they don't always clarify that so these were pre-gapped at 35 or 37 thousandths they just bought them stuck them in the car they never checked the gap so let's see 35 thousandths or 36 so we're gonna go ahead and we'll do 44 just somewhere right there see this one 37 if you go too big, squish it down just a little bit. Okay, perfect. So I did paint that. I didn't mask them off. So you got to watch the threads. For my GM plugs, you see what I do? I take an angle grinder and make a chaser to clean all the threads. I forgot to buy a plug, so we're just going to be careful. Always thread plugs in by hand first. So this intake came off of a 1974 260Z with flat top Hitachi carburetors. This is the one with all the emissions. And if you have this intake, you need to take your time and familiarize yourself with all the ports before you go throw this on the car. The vacuum stuff is going to be marked in violet, gas, and green, and the water lines in blue. We don't have to hook the water lines up to get the thing running. I thought it was to cool the air temperatures and fuel it's to actually heat it up and atomize it so we really don't need the water lines hooked up unless you live in a cold climate i live in houston texas and on this car i'm not hooking the water lines up fuel line comes in back here and it runs through the casted aluminum meaning that that fuel line is going to be heated up back then i guess that was something but now i don't think we're going to use the factory fuel line so then vacuum ports you need to check everything do these go all the way through nope not there do they right here Nope. Do these go all the way through? Come on. Yes. Okay, violet for vacuum. Okay, so I went ahead and loosened all the fittings on here so I can get the official thread size. I have no idea what it is. So I have a national pipe thread plug. The thread looks the same, but it just doesn't fit in there. So be careful. So you can see the white ones, I plug them off and I'm not sure what they do or where they go. This is a big fat one going to your brake booster vacuum line very important this half inch i don't even have a plug for it it's real weird it doesn't matter what type of car it is people are just so anxious to get the egr valve off you need to learn and understand if you really need it off or want it off in this case i want it off because it looks stupid so all this does is whenever all the vacuum is satisfied it'll open this up it'll suck that in see how it's a plug that's tapered so it's going to allow different amounts of exhaust gas to enter but it's only entering through there and coming out right here it's very very little that it's doing exhaust gas comes in here that little valve opens and it just recirculates a tiny amount in there and this stuff gets completely caked up with crap i had to chisel it out I'd probably sell this egr valve and make money on the internet but i already took the screws out we're gonna cut it and plug it because i need this little bracket right here i don't know what it does yet but it looks important i feel like it's alive and i just killed it rest in peace so tapped it with an m6 by 1.0 that's just the coarse thread pinch and that was actually one of the screws that went right here it's whatever sealing of your choice nice sealed off Gaskets that had an EGR gasket, so we're just gonna use it. 
So the EGR is 100% blocked off now, but we get to keep our little bracket that I don't know what it does yet. Nice. So now that we understand this, we can put this back on the car now. All right, the lower intake bolt, see how there's no hole? These big washers are gonna kind of hold it on and they're dueled with the exhaust manifold. So you're gonna have to have these big fat washers. So if you're doing a swap, I would loosen these 10 millimeter bolts. They're gonna free up the two sections. I guess these are gonna be kind of difficult to get on there. This is actually gonna be a pain in the butt to get bolted up. So when I get something ready to start, I go through everything. That way I don't have any problems. I'm not there wondering what went wrong. There's a lot of stuff that you can forget about, like the cooling lines. Found this piece for $15. So we're gonna run a 5 8 tube just there to there. So we have to get our little sample piece because it's very easy to get the wrong size. You need to take a sample piece if you have one. This does not use three quarter. So that's just for right now. When we put the heaters in, it goes the opposite direction. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna keep the Chevelle battery on there. I'm gonna get some covers. They're actually kind of expensive, but I'm gonna buy them. These freaking things used to be 99 cents and now they're 5.99, what the heck? So we're gonna put the old plug wires back on there. Oh my God, if they don't work, we'll buy new ones. I didn't notice that till just now. Look, they're numbered. Three, five, six, that's crazy. Make sure it doesn't hit. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it for right here. So number one should point to the front. But it's actually a little bit down. I've got six right here, so we can put six on. One, five, three, six. Perfect fit. All right, so two. So two. Nice. And check that out right there. Those are the wheels that are going on the car. Had to stretch it a little bit. So let's see how they look. So keep in mind, it looks goofy because the car's jacked up. That's why you have to cut the fenders out like that because you have to lower it with coilovers. That rocker line is gonna be lowered probably three or four inches, to be honest. That's why it looks a little goofy. See how the tire sticks out perfect? Honestly, I think I'm gonna end up leaving that tire on it. Whenever we lower it, the tire is gonna tuck in there a little bit. It's gonna look a lot better than it does now. I know it looks like some Joe Dirt redneck crap, but it's not. Keep in mind, you can change the wheels on a car. These are not the final wheels that I'm gonna put on this car. It looks like it needs to be lowered like six inches or seven inches on the front, to be honest. So I think the back is fine. We can always put a little bit smaller tire on there. Nothing to worry about the back. Passes the test. The front is where we're gonna start cutting. This fender has a dent on it and a little rust hole. So I'm gonna start on this fender. We're gonna take the spring out of that strut part or whatever it is, and we're gonna experiment with lowering the front and cutting that fender out. And the next video, I don't know when that's gonna be. I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek that I am working on it and I am gonna wide body it. And it's gonna look very cool, I promise you trying to get these parts reduced down that flow master might go on this car those are some flow master tips might go on this car not sure so i know this thing looks stupid and everybody wants it out of here but it's your vent for your gas tank it sucks with engine vacuum through here and sucks the pressure out of your gas tank if there is any so you kind of want this on here. Definitely gonna clean that up better. 
under the hood starting to look a little bit more complete and keep in mind that these wires are out there on purpose so you can see them in my little wiring series i'm doing that's why it's all kind of cartoonish hanging out all that stuff will be tucked away where you can't even see it so i'm putting everything back on trying to get everything out of the inside of the car still need a hose right there before we can get it started so we didn't even get to wire a fuse box in i was going to do it today because i started putting this on and realized i have no idea what is going on here i didn't feel like going on a spree all day looking for correct size hoses but these fuel hoses are a quarter inch and the one off the fuel pump is 5 16 so i have to get a t to reduce it down a quarter inch and then quarter inch fuel line just a lot of little things going on if this was a small block chevrolet this thing would have been started about two weeks ago so my third week of vacation is officially up so i have to go back to work tomorrow i had a great time working on this the only thing i could say bad about it is time goes by way too fast when i'm working on it so we got the brakes all done nice why didn't you clean them rotors up man nobody wants to machine these rotors anymore there's an o'reilly two or three blocks away there's a mechanic shop that i used to take all my brake parts to he used to charge me 15 dollars each one and he loved doing it it was easy money for him he doesn't even open his shop up anymore and i'm not gonna buy new rotors when these are perfectly smooth it's almost like somebody did a brake job on here and never drove the car one of the things i'm noticing on this car is that the wheels are not hub centric it's lug centric the drum is hub centric and i've been fixing the dash we fiberglass resined all the cracks i sealed them up and then this just goes over it it's gonna turn out real nice video coming on it but don't really feel like working on this stuff right now this isn't like normal body work we have to create this line from scratch there's a video on youtube where a guy did a dash like this and he didn't put that line in there and it just looks like a weird blob right here so i have it out here kind of outside so the moisture can get to it every day and i want to see if it cracks before i go to finish it every time i look at this car i like it more and more and every time i sit in it i can't wait to drive it this is going to become sort of like my weekend daily i'm not going to wide body it just yet we're going to get those regular tires on there wheels because it looks really good with it and i'm definitely going to go back with that gold color i really like that gold color the zl1 1 le just sitting there look at these rotors And I love driving this car 100%, but people just get excited when they see you. They mess with you. F-250s want to race. BMWs get so triggered when they see this car, and it just gets really annoying sometimes. We're just looking at this car because that's the inspiration behind the 280Z. I want to build a car like this. Wish I could drive it, but I can't because it's blocked in. Anyway, a little update on the Datsun. Looking very cool. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.